Hello and welcome to our video demonstration of mesh to surface organic modeling. In this video I'll just go through the basics how we can uh, use the new flexibility of our plugin to work with a completely free form surfaces like this one. And I know this may look a very basic part but it's good for a start. So, as usual, the way we work is just select this mesh within Rhino and then we select Mesh to Surface, which opens our window, which is uh, the main area where we model. Uh, mesh to Surface Organic is actually part of uh, our premium version, and more details you can find on our website. So, as usual, I'll just maximize this for ease of use. Um, the way we work is, maybe you are familiar with many different primitives you can create, but now we have a new type of shape which we call quad surface. Let's take a look a little bit on the object, and it is actually symmetrical, I assume it's symmetrical, so the whole modeling will work will be in a symmetrical way. And the way we start this is by adding a new shape which is called quad surface. The software automatically because there is no thinking already created enters in the mode which is called add phase I'll just put this in one of the, this is the top view and uh, I'll just put it in the right view so how do we do this? Uh, the add phase is allows us to create a, a, a quad face with the four corners, four sided faces then you need to, you can manipulate, maybe you know uh, sub demodeling in the other packages so this user interface is very similar so uh, the way I create a new face is by clicking the four points in space like this one or I may want to create a rectangular face which is just you draw and it keeps the points aligned to a rectangle so when you finish it will just create a perfect rectangle I'll just delete this for now and let's focus a bit on um, manipulating the, the object here so as you see these four points they have been created from the top top view of, on the right view so the way I, I can manipulate is by selecting a point and we can get this manipulator currently it's been set to the screen this means that w however even if you rotate it always gives the shows the arrows and the manipulation quote always um, from the view you are looking from but you can put it into the world coordinate system and then it's always aligned into the world axis um, let's try to manipulate I can select this point I can move it around to adjust or I can select an edge and with this edge I can scale if I scaling I can rotate and w I can move it in in space for a single point you don't get this extra controls because they don't make sense we have um, different selection modes the user can choose from he can work only with points only with edges, with the faces only, for example in this way you can take a, a face and move it around or, but uh, what we also have uh, it's called point and edge this mode which is I found it personally quite um, quite flexible and most of the time I'm using it so that's all so how we what can we do now in order to continue modeling I can just move these points around, align them and uh, uh, you can start duplicating the edges how you do this, you just select an edge then you hold the ALT key and then you move the manipulator and it inserts another edge so as you see you have control over this so then I can select the edge again and I can press the ALT key maybe I need to twist around rotate a little bit and I just create the faces which I want 
we'll move this a little bit duplicate out and this is how we do the modeling uh, I'll put it from top view so this is kind of a side view in this case I can take this and start adjusting on the screen to get as close as possible to the to the mesh um, what other options we have here it's uh, how to display the mesh you can show it as a transparent and you with the slider you can um, play with the transparency of the mesh or you can draw the mesh offset this means that it the mesh is always a little bit behind uh, what we see on the screen this offset is also can be controlled by the user so it really depends on how you work and uh, how you do the stuff so this is how you manipulate uh, in such a way you can create your surfaces um, let's try to get a bit more here I can take this this one I will just take this one we'll hold out duplicate then I'll move it a little bit back until it snaps yeah I can take this move it down and now I can hold out and it duplicates this edge as you see the software automatically shows area when this is um, we cannot handle this type of cases so the software gives you a warning that these points are which we call the extraordinary points are not good so let how we weld two points we can just select the two points right click and say weld vertices this will create one in the middle or in our software the simplest way you just pick the point drag it close to the point you want to snap to the software highlights and you leave your mouse in such a way you just reconstruct your surface until you build your complete model I will duplicate of this etc and you continue doing this at any point if you want to see the quality of what how it will look like you just press spacebar and you can see the the result as you see in this case because we we cannot handle the continuity here it's obviously you see th we have these problems but if you press repair the software inserts another point and it handles this properly you can always there are several modes here which is uh, zebra you can turn the zebra and you can see a real time the quality of your surface as you see while you move it just changes the the quality also what it, we got here it's a called tolerance display this will automatically m compare the results to the base mesh and gives you a heat map of the quality furthermore what we have is that this is actually a real time so while you move you can see how far you are from from the surface as you see I just play with them and get as close as possible well I see the results the resulting deviation from the base mesh this is very really fast and efficient algorithm which we use so that's why you can make sure in such way that you get as close as possible to the mesh so when you complete with this you can just press create in Rhino and uh, the, the surface will be created there as you see even if we have many faces the software tries to optimize and instead of creating here for example three different surfaces it will combine them and put them into a single surface so in fact what you see on the screen will have one two three four five six surfaces only not not for every um, individual quote you have so the other thing which you can do with this uh, type of modeling is you can 
always turn on the control net. The control net is uh, what actually drives the shape, and it's like the control points in Rhino of the of the surfaces or the curves, and you can manipulate and change the shape by using this uh, control net, which in many cases may help a lot. The second part of our demonstration, I'll just show the other option which we have in our software, which is called Snap Mode. It's uh, more about the artistic type of modeling, much easier for an experienced users. Also, although you can still achieve a great result, and I'll just go and show you why. I just come to the option and set Snap Mode. You can always see on the top right window that the Snap Mode is on, so you can uh, you know what is going on. In this case, uh, if you we try to add a face, when you pick the pay point, they actually come from the stay on the on the surface of the reference mesh. We have an option which is called show duplicated handle. What this is is so when you highlight an edge, not a point in an edge, you can see this sign. So instead of holding Alt key, you just come hold this and it will duplicate the, the edge. And and this is how you actually build your model by drag and drop. As, as you see, my point automatically snapped on the mesh, so all the points always stay on the mesh, even if I drop them here. They just come on the mesh. And this is, in fact, you just continue and you wrap around the object in an easy way. I'll just come here, build this for now, pick the wrong point, but you shouldn't worry about this just come here. I will just, because this is symmetric, I will just try to roughly model the half of of my object. Take this. If you double click on an edge, it actually selects the whole chain, which starts from a corner, and in this case it ends in a, at an extraordinary point. So if I duplicate, it actually will duplicate the whole chain. And I come here, let's duplicate this. So the general approach is that you try to build your um, basic wrap about around the object. So this is what you get as a half. If I press space, you get the result. And you may stop here, but I'm not really happy with this. So what I do is just come to the tolerance option, and then you can actually see how the um, your object fits your in created new surface model actually how close it is to the to the mesh and how can I improve this until I'm satisfied I can select an edge and right click and create split this will in increase the resolution it will create an uh, edge in the middle, for example, here I can do the same by right clicking or I just press the S key and then I can improve the quality by dragging uh, the edges and put my object the way I want it. As you see, this is too close, so probably I will double click this and move it a bit more here yeah? so we can get a better result and now we see that the object gets closer to what we want here we can improve further as you see the real time comparison it's always something that it's very 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 useful so let's assume that this is my shape and I modeled the half. So what we have now is, I'll just turn off the tolerance for a moment, is that we have support a symmetry. So what can you do is enable a symmetry and it mirrors the object and uh, you can choose the default planes where the mirror should happen. So we are ready with this and I can go and continue manipulating. But the problem is that currently uh, we actually have two different surfaces, if you see. So 
how we handle this is in symmetry if you double click and take the edge which will define the your edge where they will meet you just select it and then you tell the software that this is actually on a symmetry plane so the software puts these points on the plane and they always will stay there so even if you try to move they just you cannot move them away from the from the symmetry plane as you see this is my result I'm happy with this or I can improve it in many ways by dragging and dropping and you can get the quality and then when you're happy with your result you can just create this in Rhino and you can get your shape done switch all the edges in the surfaces and that's all remove the shadows and you see my result thank you